So yes indeed, this is a very common question asked by Muslims and probably more often in Ramadan and that is how do I know I have been pardoned and forgiven by the Almighty? At the onset I would say that is a reflection of Iman in the heart of an individual. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said إِذَا سَرَّتْكَ حَسَنَتُكَ وَسَاءَتْكَ سَيِّئَتُكَ فَأَنْتَ مُؤْمِنٌ When your good deeds make you happy and make you pleased and your bad actions make you sad and hurt you, then that is a sign of a believer. So the fact that a person has a concern, a, a, a passion to know if he or she has been forgiven, that itself is a positive sign. Now moving forward in terms of answering this academically. So in, in the Quran and Sunnah, we come across two terms and phrases. We have istighfar and we have tawbah. People assume this to be a mutaradif, a synonym, but in reality, if we dissect it, we will appreciate there is a difference between the two. In the 12 Jews in Surah Hud, the advice of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salatu was salam to his people, istaghfiru rabbakum thumma tubu ilay. Seek repentance to your Lord and seek tawbah. When we merge and marry the two, then that is a sign that Allah has forgiven me. Istighfar is asking Allah for forgiveness for the past, and Tawbah is pledging to Allah that I will not revert to it. Now, what should be the nature of our istighfar? Is it just a verbal declaration? Is it just a verbal apology? No, it has to be deeper and it has to be beyond. So in the 11th Juz, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wraps up and concludes the aspect of Tawbah of the, uh, the three Sahaba whose Tawbah was put on hold due to not participating in Tabuk, the Almighty says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا Those who did not participate in the Ghazwa, in the campaign, or those whose Tawbah was put on hold, حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ when the land became narrow upon them. And Abu Bakr al-Warraq's quotation is mentioned by Allama Nasafi in Madarik al-Tanzil that al-aslu fi tawbah an tadhiqa ala ta'ibi al-ardu bima rahubat. That when a person makes tawbah to Allah and he repents, then he's got to feel that. How does he feel it? Things narrow up upon him. These three Sahaba say that Hatta Tanakarat Li Al Medina, that we were living in Medina, but Medina was not the same Medina. The surroundings were not the same, the people were not the same, simply because we were in a process of reformation. In other words, the point that we are reaching out to our listeners and our viewers and to those brothers that are viewing and sisters is that when we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there must be this sincere guilt. It cannot be a casual commitment or a casual acknowledgement and we persist on the crime. So that is definitely not, not in accordance with sincere tawbah. So that is the first thing. And they realized that there's no hope and amnesty but in Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them. And now this is the beauty of the forgiveness of Allah. When, when we ask an apology to a fellow human, A, there's no guarantee. B, even if they do apologize, they would rave about this. Probably they will taunt. They'll make some sarcastic remarks. And at its best, after the repentance, the relation will not be as was previously, but probably will still be a bit reserved, would still be a bit cold. But here is the beauty of the Quran and the beauty of the forgiveness of the Almighty. The first is Allah says in the Hadith Qudsi that when a servant repents to Allah, غَفَرْتُ لَكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي Oh my servant, I will forgive you and it doesn't matter to me. I will give you a clean slate and it doesn't matter to me. The second thing, in Rabbi Rahimu Wadud, and this is mentioned in the footnotes of the tafsir under this ayah, that when Allah forgives a sinner, Allah doesn't only remove the, the, the hostility that existed due to the sin between the criminal and his creator, but Allah is Wadud, Allah is affectionate. So Allah loves the one that repents. In other words, post your repentance, you become close to the Almighty. You become, you, you, you become someone that is, uh, you know, the Almighty is fond of. And like there is a narration where a person came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Wa dhunuba. Oh, I have this colossal mammoth task of sins that are resting on my shoulders. And he was sincere. You could feel the pain in his voice, the agony, the crack, the, the discomfort. And the Messenger وسلم, said, stand up and say, Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhunubi wa rahmatuka arja indi min amali. Oh my Lord, your pardon is more vast and more encompassing than my wrong and my evil. And I'm more optimistic of your mercy than my virtuous deeds. And the Messenger وسلم, said, repeat it. And he repeated it. And then the Messenger وسلم, said, stand up and it's a clean slate and you have been forgiven. So that is the beauty. What we're saying is that when we marry and come 
couple, istighfar wa tawbah. That is, we ask Allah for forgiveness of the past and we pledge not to revert. Then that would be a testimony, a manifestation, a reflection that the Almighty has forgiven us. Often we become complicit and we stagnate at the level of seeking forgiveness for the past, but we make no pledges for the future. If a person is having an argument in his marriage or an employer and employee, and he apologizes to his employer or he apologizes to his spouse, but there are no commitments put ahead for the future, which one would forgive? In fact, I'll leave you with this point of note to reflect. This is the beauty of the forgiveness of Allah. If a person has violated me and offended me and asks of my apology, and I apologize, but I have the slightest hint that he or she will repeat the wrong, then I would withhold my pardon. But when it comes to the Almighty, at the time we repent, we might be sincere, and Allah knows for the fact that due to our fallible nature, at some point we would relapse. But given the fact that we repeat or we repent sincerely for the moment, Allah accepts our apology and Allah accepts our repentance. So like somebody said that we wash our clothes, but we know consciously it's going to get stained again. But we don't stop washing it knowing it's going to get stained. In the very same way we repent and probably due to our fallibility we will resort to sin, but we should not tire repenting. We ask Allah to make us amongst those that are pardoned before we take our last breath. How do you know if you're forgiven? Every one of us seeks the forgiveness of Allah daily. And for some of us, many times per day. But is there some way that we can know if Allah forgives us? We all know that it is only when Allah grants His mercy through forgiveness that we can hope to attain Jannah. So let us explore for signs which can point us in the direction of knowing if we are forgiven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 82, And surely I am forgiving towards him who repents and believes and does good deeds and continues in guidance. Let's look at the conditions of repentance. They are four. Number one, acknowledge that you have sinned. Number two, feel remorse and regret for what you have done. Number three, Make a commitment that you will never knowingly sin again. Number four, seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this verse of Surah Taha, you can know if you are forgiven by looking at the steps outlined. Number one, you repent with the condition stated. Number two, you believe, meaning you follow the five pillars of Islam diligently and sincerely. And that is belief, salah, saum, Zakah and Hajj. Number three, you do good deeds and check yourself regularly what good deeds you are doing. If you see more opportunities for doing good deeds are presented to you regularly, know that Allah is leading you to forgiveness and Jannah. If you are not finding good deeds to do regularly, make dua constantly seeking forgiveness and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for opportunities to do good deeds. Number four, read the Quran regularly for continued guidance. If you feel a deep love of Allah in your heart and you are prepared to follow all His commands, know that Allah loves you. He will only put love for Him in the heart of someone He loves. If you feel compassion towards humanity, know that Allah is compassionate to you. If you love people for the sake of Allah, Allah will put love for you in the hearts of others. If the majority of people you come in contact with loves you, know Allah also loves you. When you have the love of Allah, it means you have forgiveness from Him. So let us look once more at this verse from Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 82. And surely I am forgiving towards him who repents and believes and does good deeds and continues in guidance. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to live up to these standards so we can know we are forgiven before.